Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening, everyone. The state government is safe for now, with rebel speaker Sue Hickey reneging on her threat to quit the Liberal Party and turn independent. Earlier this week, she called the Premier weak. Now she's saying they can work together again. Our political reporter Michelle Wisby joins us live now from Parliament House. Michelle, good evening. What stops Sue Hickey from pulling the pin on her own government? Joe, the Speaker today brought down an end to a very long week of negotiations with the Premier. She said as late as last night she was still deciding just what she was going to do. One factor which did lead her to stay was whether she was going to plunge the government into political chaos, potentially costing the Premier his job. But now she hasn't ruled out going independent in the future if she is not happy. Tasmania's rogue speaker putting her foot down. Sue Hickey bringing an end to a week spent holding the state government hostage. I gave um, being independent a really serious thought. You know, uh, I certainly weighed up what was in the best interests of the community and what I thought was in the best interests of the government and what was in the best interests of myself. Following a year of dramatic and unprecedented rebellion, including votes against the Liberals and bluntly criticising her own government. Tensions finally reached boiling point as she threatened to leave her own party when she wasn't included in this week's cabinet reshuffle. I think this time we've reached that crescendo in a marriage, you know, where you have to stop and say, you know, are we going to go forward and hold hands or are we just going to split up and divide the kids? <laughs> If she did turn independent, tight numbers mean the Liberal Party would be forced into minority, potentially bringing down the government. But after being offered a sweetener, for now, she's staying. Are you committed to remaining as a Liberal for your full term now? Um, at this stage, yes, definitely. Um, I've, I've, as I've always said, it's always on the record that I believe I'm a true blue Liberal. Um, I'm just probably a little more liberal than um, some people would like. Not being cute here, we, we've, uh, we've agreed to work together, so that means giving each other um, respect, uh, a commitment to work together. To get her over the line, she says the government has promised to deliver a 50-bed drug and alcohol rehabilitation facility in Hobart. But funding and timeline details remain vague. Her back and forth in decision dividing parties. I think most Tasmanians would look at the decision that she's taken today and wonder what the last week's been about though. Uh, she hasn't left, hasn't become an independent. We know that business likes certainty, we know that um, the people of Tasmania voted for a stable government at the last election, so we're pleased to be through the last week and now back into uh, a steady sailing of a, a nice strong majority government. I'm again um, taking uh, Sue Hickey on a word and I'm sure she'll stand by it. She's previously and on a number of occasions assured the government of supply and confidence. Setting a new precedent for a new style of speaker, a role usually kept separate from politics. I think it's a little more beholden on me to also try and be a bit more respectful. Um, but, you know, if I'm not happy about something, I think everyone's going to know. Michelle, can I ask, is the government now completely out of trouble? Well, Joe, today Sue has revealed that she doesn't want to be a minister anymore, believing she wields more power in her current role. But what this has really highlighted is that the government is only hanging on by a thread. And Joe, the name of that thread is Sue Hickey. Thank you for your report there. Michelle Wisby joining us from Parliament. The parents of two Launceston men murdered in separate crimes say they've finally been given justice. First, those behind the death of Bradley Bruard were locked behind bars. Then hours later, a woman who covered up the murder of Tyson Timothy Clark Robertson was also sent to prison. Two grieving parents to two murdered sons, finally able to see those responsible locked away. Mother Rebecca Faulkner today recalled the Bradley Bruard she loved. He was funny, he was good looking, he was loving, he was kind. His killer was ex-bodybuilder Mark Rodney Jones. He was assisted by his employee, Ricky John Izard. Both men were convinced Mr Bruard had stolen a Nissan Patrol belonging to Jones. So on New Year's Day 2017, the pair went to a Newnham unit where Mr Bruard was staying. Jones tortured the 22-year-old, 
eventually suffocating him with a plastic bag. Izard then helped Jones dump the body in Lake Eugenana before the pair burnt the evidence. By February, both men were in custody. Last week, Jones was unable to convince a jury of his innocence. Today, he was sentenced to 22 years behind bars for murder, with a non-parole period of 13 years. Justice Robert Pierce said he did not accept Jones had shown genuine remorse. Izard admitted his part for manslaughter, aggravated burglary and perverting the course of justice. Justice Pierce described him as a willing participant to cruel and prolonged violence. He received 10 years in prison and will have to serve at least six. Like it's the best that we could get out of it, so it's never going to be Bradley back, but... It's also by a cruel twist of fate that the family of Mr Bruard is also friends with the family of another murder victim. Today, the final defendant in the Tyson Timothy Clark Robertson murder arrived at court to learn her fate. Ian Rosewall bludgeoned Mr Clark Robertson with a hammer and buried the body at their shared Mayfield home. But for 10 months, Rosewall's girlfriend, Renee Lorraine Donald, pretended to be the victim in messages to his father. Today, she was given six years jail for being an accessory to murder. Finding the strength afterwards, it was with gratitude, not anger, that Father Tim Clark spoke. I would like to take the time out to thank all those involved in solving the case of my beloved son. The last two years have been put a huge amount of stress on myself and my family. In April, Rosewall was sentenced to 22 years for the July 20, 2016 murder. Mr Clark says he will remember his son from before that tragic day. He was a bit of a character like his father. Yep. Uh, funny. And, um, and I loved him. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Two people accused of the 2017 murder of tattoo artist Dwayne Doc Davies have had a new trial date set. Mr Davies' wife Margaret Ann Otto and friend Bradley Scott Perkis have both previously pleaded not guilty, appearing in the Hobart Supreme Court via video link today. A directions hearing has been set for September 2nd with a trial expected to begin the following day. Two people in their 80s have avoided serious injury after their car collided with a truck on the Midland Highway at Milton Mowbray this morning. The pair was hospitalised, but thankfully police say it was a low-speed crash. Emergency crews helping to remove a man from his now wrecked car. The front of the vehicle crumpled after colliding with a truck near the Bothwell turnoff at 10.40. It would appear at this stage that the truck has pulled out in front of the white sedan travelling north. A female passenger from the car loaded into the waiting rescue helicopter to be transported to hospital. <laughs> Authorities taking special precautions with the car's occupants in their 80s. Because both were elderly patients, um, they suffered chest and abdominal injuries and due to the unknown nature of those, it was just easiest and safest to transport them by helicopter to Hobart. The driver of the truck was physically uninjured. The crash was initially thought to be serious, but police say it happened at a relatively low speed for this section of the highway. Due to the nature of the accident, the impact wasn't that high. Um, the, don't believe the white sedan was travelling that fast. Police say the occupants from the car escaped without significant injuries. Michael Breen, 7 Tasmania News. It's been a baptism of fire for the new health minister, Sarah Courtney, when a disgruntled patient hijacked her first press conference in the role. What was meant to be a meet and greet with workers soon became a date with the face of public discontent. If the Liberals thought Sue Hickey was their only headache, enter Malcolm. Strong grip, young lady. <laughs> but the question is whether the new minister has a grip on the health system. You still haven't answered my question. Well, with regards to uh, the funding that Al Andrew Wilkie is referring to, I'm not going to comment on that uh, specifically. Why and not? Uh, well, as I've said from a state perspective, uh, we are providing increased funding. Devonport's Malcolm Milner claims his thyroid surgery was cancelled three times due to a lack of beds. I'm a pensioner and um, I, I think we should be given better. 
A press conference about everything from a local abortion clinic. I don't have any specific actions that I'm planning on taking. I think it's best first to be able to engage with the stakeholders. To her predecessor, Michael Ferguson. Uh, let me be clear, Michael Ferguson has done a brilliant job in health. Unexpectedly changed course, although it ended with a smile. Well, good luck. Thank you, I appreciate well, I that. Say. An early glimpse into how touchy matters of health can be. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. The next generation of environmentally conscious citizens have been successful in turning trash into treasure as part of a competition hosted by the Glenorchy City Council. Keen school groups proud to show off their work today with two lucky winners to have their creative art pieces driven around the suburbs. Starting from the ground up, these students are committed to leading the fight against pollution. Keen to trash the idea that sustainability is too hard, they're spreading one important message. How to compost stuff and recycle. They've tirelessly worked to create these art pieces for the food waste themed competition. A nail biting weight as the entries from eight primary schools were judged today by Glenorchy's mayor. But there could only be two winners, Bowen Road and Rosetta Primary getting the main goal. I'm very excited. They'll be probably hunting the garbage truck to try and find where their artwork is. This work will now grace the side of a rubbish collection truck as it drives around the suburbs over the next year. The competition's created to get the message out to school students and then out to the broader community about the importance of separating waste and the importance about proper waste management. So really into this sort of thing and they are really happy to go home and share with their family and try and encourage other people in their family to do the same thing. While these students are excitedly preparing to share their environmental learnings. It's important for the environment so it doesn't die. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. With Dark Mofo well and truly over, those behind Launceston's Junction Arts Festival say its 2019 event is one to look forward to. The four-day festival in September, which celebrates Tasmanian artists, will expand its offerings in Prince's Square by hosting open fire food and wine bars. Creating a thing called Nightlight, it's a bit of a nighttime walk. It's going to be, you'll be able to go to all the different spaces in and around the square and in the buildings, and artists are all creating weird and wonderful things within those spaces. So I think that's something really special. In the church behind me, there's going to be a big concert of some of the best singers in Tasmania. The family-friendly festival attracts around 11,000 people each year. A Tasmanian physiotherapist is among the best in the world when it comes to helping people recover from major abdominal surgery. Ianthi Bowden received the Pedro Prize for her work at a Global Physical Therapy Congress in Switzerland. Despite being recognised for leading physiotherapists right across the globe, Ianthi Bowden remains humble. It was a huge surprise that our clinical trial won best clinical trial for 2019 uh, worldwide in all of physiotherapy. So, um, complete shock. I may have spawned. Uh, <laughs> made a bit of a, a, a fool of myself, but uh, yeah, it was just an incredible honour. The Tasmanian medical researcher spent two years analysing nearly 300 patients. What they had in common was a challenging recovery post major abdominal surgery. So they have a 1 in 10 likelihood of dying within 30 days of surgery. One in five of them, if they survive, have to go to rehabilitation and more often than not they're nowhere near back to normal um, after surgery, within the year after surgery. But the trial found two simple things made all the difference. So the physio would coach the patient twice a day to take deep breaths. And the patients would then be required to do that by themselves every hour during the day. And in addition, the physio would then also exercise with the patient for half an hour a day. And patients like Lee Wallace are living proof, returning to work as a nurse just eight weeks after rupturing her diaphragm. It got me up out of bed, I did the breathing, um, I was moving virtually day one after the surgery and I had lots of tubes and drains and thought, oh my God. Um, but we got up and we walked down the corridor, which I was most surprised about. Those who made the work possible couldn't be prouder. We provide the nurses the funding and the facilities and then they find these translational outcomes like this, which is on the world stage, will save millions of dollars for the health system and more importantly is that this will actually save some people's lives. Jessie Gilmore, 7 Tasmania News. 
The Adelaide Crows have secured promising Tasmanian teenager Chase Jones until at least 2023. The former Launceston player was picked nine in last year's draft before debuting in round one against the Hawks. Since then, he's played five more senior games, averaging just under 10 touches. The 19-year-old says his whole Crows experience has been a dream come true and he's thrilled to sign an extension. Glenorchy coach Paul Kennedy says his side can still defeat North Launceston despite the injury list growing by the day. But the Northern Bombers will have plenty to play for after going down to Lauderdale last week. With more than 20 players still sidelined through injury, the absence of ball magnet Jay Bowden for the clash at Utah's stadium will compound the Pies' woes. The ankle that he injured last year has just been playing up a bit um, and we've made the decision to, to get it checked, um, make sure it's OK. Um, you know, like, we, we don't want him just limping through the season. But Kennedy says the return of up to nine players next week gives the club hope of locking down at least third on the ladder. Before then, the Pies need the points against North Launceston. They've had players come and go, change of coaches, but the, their system remains and they play the game on their terms. And particularly on that ground, um, the challenge is to play the game the way you want to play it. Um, and that takes a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work. At Windsor Park, Kingbro will face the tough task of defeating Launceston on home soil. Despite going down to the Pies last week, coach Trent Bormler says there are plenty of positives heading into round 14. I think our footy stacks up, which is really good. We can take that level of confidence that, that what we do and when we do it well, um, you know, stacks up really well. But as the battle for fourth and fifth heats up, the Tigers will need to tame one of the league's most potent midfields and one of its best big men in Mitch Thorpe. I'm sure they'll be out to, to start the game really well and we need to make sure we start well. Last time we played them, we had a poor first quarter and they jumped us, so we need to get down there and get into the contest a bit earlier than we did last game. Meanwhile, Devils coach Adrian Fletcher is hoping history repeats itself when the under-18s meet the Bendigo Pioneers at the Twin Ovals. Back in round seven, Jai Menzies' goal after the siren sealed a memorable two-point win. We know that uh, they've added a few big country boys to their side, but we've added a few players to our side as well. Nick Baker comes back, Ryan Mansell, which was, uh, he, he, those two were in good form early in the season. So we're looking forward to a real contest down there at Kingba. Andrew McCarthy, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmanian cyclist Richie Port is putting the finishing touches on his Tour de France preparation with the first stage set to get underway tomorrow night. But the Trek Segafredo rider is philosophical about his chances of winning the 2019 event after crashing out in two consecutive years. The Tour hasn't been kind to Richie Port. This sickening crash ended his dream in 2017 before 2018 delivered even more heartache. Talking to NBC Sports in the US, Port is talking down Aussie expectations, with illness marring his preparation. He's backing in last year's winner, Geraint Thomas, for the yellow jersey, after Chris Froome was forced to withdraw. I'm still as motivated as I ever was um, to, to do well. Like, you know, go to the tour this year, I'm not going to say I think I can win the tour, but I'd love to be on the podium and that's my motivation. Port says he's been working on his descents with downhill mountain bikers. But he says fatherhood is making him more risk averse in an era where pro riders are pushing the envelope even further. There's maybe a lot less respect in the peloton than, than what there used to be. You know, there's not like a big patron of the bunch anymore that tells people to, to chill out. But I've never been a risk taker. And, um, you know, it's like every race, you know, you see guys doing you know, taking bigger risks. And with a new team in Trek Segafredo and a renewed focus on and off the road, the Tasmanian insists he's got plenty of years left in the legs. The only Australian to win the grandest of tours, Cadell Evans, was the same age as Port when he won in 2011. It depends on the day. It goes from I can do it for another three years to, you know, maybe another five. Who knows? Andrew McCarthy, 7 Tasmania News. Wynyard sailing star Chris Simons is already off to a strong start at this year's Para World Sailing Championship in Spain. Simons, who holds last year's title, has clinched four out of the last six races. The 59-year-old is sitting second overall after day two on the water. Competitors have another two days of sailing before the medal race on Sunday. 
Good evening. King and Flinders Islands, along with Launceston and Devonport, the state's high today of 15 degrees, Hobart 13 and Burnie 12. Butler's Gorge, the low, uh, minus four, as we saw a partly cloudy day across the state with just a rare shower over the north and east. Lowhead 14, Smithton and Friendly Beaches 13, St Helens and Strawn 12 today, Lyawini 7, Ooze scrambled to just five degrees. Low cloud over the north and east today, mostly clear skies elsewhere after the fog cleared from the Derwent Valley. A large cloud band over Western Australia spirals into a low over the bite. Cold convective air travels behind those systems. Eastern and central Queensland has some low cover, a little more over the southeast of the continent. Tomorrow, the high, even though it's moving off, still extends a ridge up the east coast of the nation. A cold front extends from a low over the bite into South Australia. Winds north to northeasterly, around 10 to 15 knots, reaching 20 knots at times over the west. Light nor nor-westerly winds inland. Let's kick off the weekend with a, an early fog, but a sunny afternoon for Hobart and 14 degrees. A cold start for Maidina, 13 the top, 11 the high for Oatlands. Launceston, partly cloudy and 16 degrees, 15 for Devonport with an early shower clearing. Maybe a morning shower for Lyawini as well, a top of 9. Burnie, an early shower, 15 the top, 16 for Strawn, a sunny day. Marrawar, mostly sunny and 15 degrees. And 16 the top for St Helens, a possible shower. A little further south, Swansea should be mostly sunny in 17 and 15 the top for Orford. On Sunday, a fine start, but a shower will develop over the west from late afternoon. Showers on Monday easing and contracting to the west and far south. And on Tuesday, another shower over the western half. Fine for the remainder, apart from the chance of a late shower over the north. A possible shower in Perth. A late shower over Adelaide. Sunny in 18 in Melbourne tomorrow. A shower or two for both Sydney and Brisbane. Things cooling down in Hobart under clear skies, 7 degrees at the moment. 10 in Launceston, bit of cloud about, same in Devonport, 11 degrees at the moment. Joe, have a great weekend. Well, you too, Murph. Well, that's all from the news team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you with updates throughout the evening. Bye-bye.